What's up everyone, today I'm going to talk to you about optimal tech recovery. Optimizing your tech recovery is going to allow you to live in situations where you'd most likely die. It's also going to allow you to understand how to punish these recoveries correctly. I have one rule you need to follow when tech recovering in order to be successful. Don't mash. Before we cover this though, I want to give you a quick explanation of knockdowns. First we're going to refer to a traditional fighting game to better understand what to look for in a knockdown. As you'll see, the opponent on the right gets knocked down, giving him some intangibility and a bit of time for a recovery option. As he gets up, he can launch his counterattack. A similar state occurs in Ninjala. To begin, there are two instances of a knockdown state, a freefall knockdown and a wall knockdown. Knockdowns are very complex and I will go into their detail in another video, but for now I'll give you the light version. Let's explore what puts you in a knockdown. From light weapons, knockdowns typically occur after three normal hits and one break attack. From heavy weapons, namely hammers, besides Popeye and Cerberus, you'll be put in a knockdown after three hits. From all weapons, two break attacks will always put you into a knockdown. And also, I want you to realize that the order of this doesn't actually matter. And note that any kind of hit can put you in this state, including gumshots and ninjutsus, if they max out your knockdown threshold. You'll know it's a knockdown when your reticle is grayed out. If you're being attacked, you need to know when the opponent has maxed out your knockdown threshold because this is when you're intangible and unable to be hit. Every weapon has two options out of a knockdown. You'll always get one jump and one dash, even if you have already used both of your jumps and dashes. You can use these separately or in conjunction for your tech recovery. You'll refresh these options as soon as you touch the ground, so you can either use both options in effort to try and refresh them, or use only one and save the other in case you get caught again. It's also possible to jump cancel and teleport attack the opponent so long as your weapon permits it. If you haven't used your gum boost, you'll also be able to use that after jump or dash. Although tech recovery is situational, it is important to note that if the opponent follows up immediately, you'll want to wait. If the opponent launches you and then ends their pursuit, you can immediately tech. Also, at the highest levels of play, it sort of becomes a 50-50 and needs to be predicted. From freefall knockdown, you can recover practically any time after the initial launch, even right before landing on the ground. You'll see in the clips that even if you're hit all the way down off of the ledge, you can tech and will still be intangible until you do so. As you hit a wall, so long as you know it's a wall knockdown, you'll have some time to try and jump out early. But be careful as opponents will try to throw out an attack to punish. So instead, mix it up and wait, then jump or dash out. If you take your time and end up forgetting the tech, touching the ground at the end of a knockdown will cause you some serious end lag. By understanding tech recovery options, you also need to understand how to properly punish. If you can manage to predict the opponent's timing, you'll be able to continue your onslaught of attacks. Also, if they wait too long against the wall, there will be a window where you're able to properly punish them as your reticle will turn red. When they're launched far off, you can try and track them with a homing attack, but it won't be as successful uh, the later they tech. As soon as they do tech, realize that they're, they no longer have intangibility and also can be hit. So in some cases, you may want to swing early if they decide to mash. With wall combos being more and more prevalent, this technique becomes more important. A great way to practice this is by having a friend hit you with two break attacks towards a wall. Then have them try to punish you. Remember to mix your, up your timing and be patient with this, as it will take some time to get used to. But once you've mastered it, you'll notice that being able to live and escape combos makes a huge difference. Thanks for tuning in. Please go follow these amazing people that helped me put the clips together. Their links are in the description. And also, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video. It does help my channel grow.